Hello everybody. Once again, I find myself in a situation where life has gotten the better of me. My degree is taking up all of my time, and I'm knee-deep in research and stats, numbers, really kind of boring stuff. So, I'm definitely going to get out a new Critter Miss video very soon. I'm going to have a new series coming out that was sadly stalled a little bit in January, but we're definitely getting to it now. I'm really looking forward to it, but for now, I really wanted to get, at least get a video out, and I thought that for a good vlog to talk about something that I get asked rather often from people who watch the show, from friends of mine, from people that I meet in game stores, just everywhere. Like, whenever people find out that you have DM'd or you've story told or whatnot for a long amount of time, you start to get questions from new people, people very interested in gaming, just, you know, how do you... how do you dungeon master, game master, storyteller, whatever, the perfect game? Or maybe not the perfect game, but how do you do a great game? Like, how do you do a memorable one? And I've had a couple... I've had a, a lot of really memorable games in my time, and granted, like, I think a lot of people will attest that a lot of games kind of fizzle out, but whenever you get into that sweet game, that, that, I'm not going to say perfect, because no game's perfect, but whenever you get into that great game with that great group of people and just everything seems to be clicking, you know, it, it, it's some of the best moments in, in role-playing, uh, any sort of role-playing game, so how is it, like, how is you as a storyteller create the perfect game? Well, there is no one right or wrong answer to this, and really it can go any other way. Like, what I need to be a great storyteller could be completely different from somebody else. Whenever I get asked this question, I think that I generally come up with a couple of generalizable things that I think that everybody can implement and use to hone their skills as a storyteller, to hone their skills as a dungeon master, and actually, like, help facilitate, create, create a great game. So, I got ten things. I, I listed them on my notebook. I'm gonna read them off to you. And, once again, please keep in mind that this is not, like, the definitive list of things that you must do, and there might be more to this list. There might be more that you need. Some of these might not necessarily apply to you. But I think these are just general things that everybody can use and implement to really create a great game. So, let's get started. And there's no real, like, order. These are just ten tips, really. So, let's start with number one. Start small. Whenever you want to get into storytelling, whenever you want to be the dungeon master, maybe you've played a couple of times, maybe you dive straight in saying, I want to be the storyteller, which also is not a bad thing. Like, if you get into RPGs, maybe you played, like, one game, and you're like, you know what, I want to be a dungeon master. Don't think you have to have, like, this set limit of, like, games to hit play before you can storytell. You can storytell immediately. But... It's definitely a good idea to start small, because there are just some mechanics, some things that you need to learn, and some things that you learn as you go that can be really challenging if you dive headfirst into a very lengthy campaign. And I've seen a lot of, like, mistakes here and there, you know, giving away too many very strong legendary items, not really knowing how combat works, seeing combat in full, but, like, the party is overpowered or the party is underpowered. Just, there's little things that, like, you might not necessarily pick up on them the first try. So the idea is to start small, and I think a good way to start small, before you start creating your own games and whatnot, is to start off, especially with, like, pre-constructed games. I mean, I got some 5th edition ones just right here that I pulled off of my shelf, but just about every major RPG company is going to have, like, preset sort of games. A lot of the indie ones and the small ones even have ones in their book. So I think it's usually a good idea to start off small, to start off with pre-constructed games. Read through those books. Some people never get off them. That's also fine, too. You don't have to build your own story. You can just keep telling great stories that were made by Wizards of the Coast or Onyx Path or whatever. But you always should really start off small or start off, you know, 
at least get like the first the first like set of challenges in some of these books and see how you feel and like how you're feeling like handling a game with you know four or five six other people if you really really want to create your own game you just have so many ideas and they're bursting out of you I think another good idea is to start off with one-offs very small games manageable to within maybe one or two sessions and that way you can kind of gauge what your strengths are what what are you good at as a storyteller and what are you bad at don't get me wrong like there's a lot of ways that like DMs are all different and they all we all have strengths and weaknesses I myself also have a lot of weaknesses I mean ask any of my players that it's 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 just it's just part of life there's some things you're better at there's some things you're worse at and the idea is also to really play to your strengths and you know your strengths whenever you run these smaller sessions and you realize huh you know, I'm not the greatest at improvising, so I have to find a way to structure everything that that way whenever the party deviates, I have a backup plan instead of just thinking off of the cuff. Or maybe you're just a great improviser, but you're not the greatest with characters. So all the characters kind of feel the same because you're just not maybe the greatest actor. You don't have the greatest versatility, and that's not a problem either, you know. Whenever you, whenever you look at these situations, you say, all right, you need to work to your strengths, you need to work to your weaknesses, and you learn that through smaller games. And you can learn this in larger ones, but usually that comes with a set of problems because you're in a long setting for the long haul and you've made mistakes, square one, that might be long-lasting for several sessions forward and also might leave the players with like a bitter taste in their mouth at the end and then build up to the point where they don't want to play anymore and your game essentially fizzles out. So the first one is definitely start small, one-offs, pre-constructed games, and then build from there. Number two is whenever you build, sorry I mean I'm looking off on here just you know reading my notes some um. but either way whenever you get to number two build your own whenever you're building your own game have an idea have not just an idea but a firm concept have like an idea in your head of what you want to do and you would think that this is common like I can <laughs> that's the thing is I've, I, I know right now that some people are watching this like Tanner that's common sense like what the fuck are you talking about it's not I've seen so many games where people jump in and really have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea of this world that they built that's like half-baked world. They have no idea about the characters. They don't know where they want their characters to end up or the story that they want to tell. They got so caught up in like building some part of the world that they forgot to create a story or they got so caught up in wanting to tell the great story of good and evil that they completely forgot that this world has to have towns and this world has to have people and these people have to have names like whenever you are coming into this you need to have a very firm and concrete idea that you can build off of that you can construct and like build outward think of it as like the big bang for your RPG world. You have to be the Big Bang Universe. If it fizzles out, then, you know, it's just, it's going to fizzle out for the entire campaign setting, which really actually leads right into number three, which is world build. And I mean world build. This is an area where you have to be good at, at least. And there are strengths and weaknesses, and you can be not the greatest at world building you can leave some things out but like you have to at least be good at building worlds and you need to think and i mean of everything you need to think of cities you need to think of towns populations what are the populations of that city what's the demographics of that city what's the politics of the city fun fact the first time i actually started to use my political science like bachelor's and master's degree was actually building D, &D campaigns because i would construct very complex political systems for my D and D games that never, like half of it, never even came into play in the game that we were playing. It it never even came up. The fact that you know this one city had a parliamentary system while this other one had a unicameral, you know, two party system, and all of this, like, it's it's things like that, like 
that you know, as as the world builder, as the the god of this universe, that the players don't need to know, and they might not ever come up with it. You might actually make a city that is never touched by your characters, that sits off on the other end of the universe, but you know the names of at least 60 people in that city, 60 creatures in that city, and what they do. You know that there's a blacksmith in that city, and the blacksmith's name is Falgor. They never meet Falgor. As a matter of fact, Falgor never comes up in the game, but you know that they're there just in case if they wander in to that city for whatever reason. Maybe they just decide, they look on the map and they throw a dart at a wall and it lands there. You know that Falgor is there. It's things like that that really go the extra mile whenever it comes to creating your own world and actually like running your own game with your own ideas is think of everything even if it might never come into play. Because on the off chance that they wander off they stray off whatever path that you've constructed, and they end up in some random-ass place. You know what that random-ass place is, you know who's there, and you know what adventures they can get into until you can get them back to the right path. So, number four, though, we're talking about paths. You cannot have a 100% set path. You just can't. And the reason being is because... D&D is a game, it, it, unlike a video game, unlike a movie, this is a world that changes around you at any moment. This is a world where the protagonist can even see the, can see the plot in front of them and say, I don't want to do the plot, I want to go hang out with Falgor over in this fucking bumblefuck city up in the middle of nowhere. That's the thing, is that all D&D games are inherently open world, and you have the ability to kind of go wherever you want and build the rules as you go. So as a storyteller, at least for me, everyone has a different kind of idea to this. My strategy is always that I have a f set beginning, I have a set middle point, and I know where I want the characters to end up at the end of the campaign. It's an amorphous sort of story where I really want them... Let's say that there is a big bad who wants to take over the world. The, the, the cookie cutter thing. You got a big bad. Maybe he's with a demon. Who the fuck knows? So you have this. So it's okay. Well, the beginning is, is that he's trying to play with them because he thinks it'll be fun. The middle is the really lock-in phase where... They're pulled in, and now it's clearly a battle between the forces of good and evil, with the forces of good being the players, and the forces of evil being the bad guy. And then, at the end, is whenever the big final battle happens. What happens in between those three points? I don't know. It goes week to week, and it builds over time. And it builds with the story. Other people have a lot more rigid sets, where they have to have like very firm pass each day. Others just kind of wing it. They don't even really have even the beginning, middle, and end. They're just like, I want to tell a story. Here's some bad guys that might be in this world. Fuck it. Let's see where they go. And, you know, you can, you can also do that too. But you have to remember that sometimes, no matter how carefully laid out your plans might be, these are human beings that think and feel and act in their own self-interest. And they're going to stray off the path. They're going to go somewhere else. And you always need to be able... Maybe you're not the greatest at improvising, but you need to at least be able to have enough going for that session to where you can get through the end of the day and you can reassess and reset if you're not the best at improvising. If you're great at improvising, at that point you can kind of let them stray away and stumble, but you can't just force them back into the path and say the plot has dictated this. That's a way that you're going to lose your, your, your players. Your players are suddenly going to realize, I have no autonomy, I have no destiny, I don't see the point of why I'm playing this game. I don't want to play this game anymore. And they will leave. And you, you might have some people that's going to stick around, there are some people who really just like that and whatnot, and that can work too, but... Really, you the whole thing is you always want to keep your players engaged, and you always 
maybe want to have them think that they're always in control, even whenever you're steering them in the right direction. Think of it as like a river, and they're the raft, and certainly there might be like twists and turns, and they might stray off like onto this creek, but you always want to get them back. You always want to find a way to funnel them back to where their destination is. So, number five, do not worry if you're going week to week. And what I mean by this is that it's good to have a very, a very set plan. It's good to have a plan that you can work with over time. But just remember that sometimes it's okay to go week to week. Sometimes it's okay that you don't know what's going to happen next week. You've just built for this week. And then next week, you build after you figure it out. And you build after you figure it out. There's nothing really wrong with that. Sometimes after a while, you really want to get a very firm plan of like, all right, we've been wondering for a while. This has to have a destination. But if you're in that area where it's like, I've lost control of this, like we're off somewhere else, they maybe have killed the person that was supposed to like help them, you know, save the day, so I don't know how we're going to be able to do it without this character. Okay, just get to a point where you feel comfortable. You know, go week to week, give them smaller tasks, do, do what you gotta do. And then get to a point where you at least can now say, all right, I feel like we're in a stable location. Let's build from there. Let's, let's get back on track. But if you end up in that week-to-week -week scenario where you have no idea what they're doing next week, you have no idea where the plot's going, don't feel too discouraged. It's not over just yet. Just remember that eventually you're going to have to settle down and say, we have to get somewhere at some point. We've been meandering too long. So here's the thing, number six, this is a big one. It is your job as the storyteller to make the players care. It is not their job to be invested in your game, and this is a big one. This is a big mistake that I see from a lot of people that they have this great idea, they have this great game, and they've been invested, and they built the world, and they built Falgor and the others over here, and they're so excited, and they're so jazzed, and they're ready to give it, and then they just expect the players to also be invested. Listen, this is a big one. Just because you love this thing, just because you built this and you want to show the world your baby, does not mean that people aren't going to think your baby's ugly. Like, you have to remember that you built this world, which is a great feat. Some people don't even get to the world building stage. Some people don't get to this point. But if you build this great and magnificent world and you're passionate about it, the passion's going to come out, but you also have to be able to use that passion to make people care who have never heard about this stuff, who might not be interested. Think in the way that... Don't think of it as you're playing with a whole bunch of yourselves who are all jazzed. Think of it as you're playing against someone who would have no interest in it at all. How do you get them to care? Because I guarantee you, the people that are going to be sitting at the table, most of the time, are already going to be invested a little bit. So you're not already at the lowest common denominator. So, build. Make people care. No. Think of your methods to how to make people care. How do you pull people in? How do you get people to do what you want to do? There are tricks of the trade, and I think I was going to make a video about this, but I'll give a free one away very quickly. Let's say that you have the bad guy, and you want them to know that they're the bad guy. And you don't want them to sympathize, you want them to kill the bad guy. A trick that I've always done, and now that I say this, that might not work in later games, but a trick that I've always done look for the NPC that they all love. They always have one. And it could be the Lusty Bar Maiden, it could be Falgor up in the one place that I've been talking about this whole time. It could be anybody. It could be this random NPC that you didn't want them to care about. Find that NPC and have them butchered by the bad guy. And I mean slaughtered. Like execution style slow death. After that, that party will go to the ends of the earth to avenge NPC person. They will go to the ends of the earth. And that's just one of various methods. And just 
you know, you always have to be able to spin it in a way that also gets them coming with you. Like, just always think, have tricks up your sleeve, have ways to make people care, have ways to make people be invested, to generate emotion out of them. Don't just go in expecting them to care because you care. Go in and make them care. Number seven, and this is another big one, and I cannot stress this enough, and this is one that will get you so much resentment, and your game is going to fizzle out, and people are going to be mad, and they're going to talk about you behind your back to a bunch of people saying that you're a bad DM, that you're a bad storyteller, that they hate the game. Do not make main characters. And by that I mean not not the, the, the players, but th this might involve too. You might have this great NPC that you think is cool and you think is awesome. Do not make that character the main character and the in and the player characters are the sidekicks to this great noble person. If you have player characters and let's say that you have a friend that you're playing with it, maybe you're better friends with the others. Do not make that person the main character. Do not solely focus on them. Know whenever you're giving too much attention to one player or you're giving way too much attention or things to this major NPC to the point where the player characters are second fiddle to your NPC or maybe this player character. Do not make main characters. Your main characters are four, five, or six people sitting around this table and they're all equal. And you can bring up that the Lord of the Rings had like, you know, Frodo and whatnot. No. In this one you don't have Frodo. You might have Frodo, but Frodo is just one piece of a bigger puzzle. Similar to Lord of the Rings actually, but Frodo is just one piece of a bigger puzzle and his story is no better or no worse than Legolas. And that's how you have to come at D&D &D games. You can't have main characters. And that's a seriously bad trap that I see so many people fall into. I might make a whole video on this, but I see so many people fall into it because it's, it's a common problem. It, it, it really is a common problem because a lot of our stories that we see in movies and TVs that, that generate in us these wants and desires to play games you know, they, they have main characters and protagonists, you know, Star Wars had Luke Skywalker, you know, um, you know, Star Trek, James T. Kirk, you know, the Hunger Games with Katniss, and, and so on and so forth, like, you have your main characters, but in an RPG, your main characters are the three to eight people sitting at the table that you're running the game for, and they are all equal. They might do something that's more heroic than others sometimes. Someone might be very quiet and they might sit off to the side and they might not talk as much. Be sure to get them involved. Be sure to make sure everybody feels important because I guarantee you, I guarantee you that no matter what, if you have that main character, it, whether it be the NPC run by yourself, whether it be the PC that's just, you know, your best friend or whatever, everyone else is going to grow resentful they're going to start dropping like flies out of your campaign. They're not going to want to play with you. And they're going to be saying things either to your face or behind your back that you are a terrible DM and people should not play with you. Number eight is another one that I really believe... I really believe, and this one might be me very much, is I do not believe in party comp. I've had this video, it's, you know, the myth and realities of party comp. But understand that you don't need the set healer, you don't need the set tank, you don't need the set DPSs. So I forgot DPS for a second. You don't need the set DPSs because this is not a video game. This is a world that you can build and function around. It's, it's, it's liquid. Video games have set rules, set mechanics that can't be broken unless you break the video game code. RPGs don't. You can, you can do anything. You can break the meta because there's no meta to break because it's all liquid. So, even though, if, if you want to still do the typical comp, like, all the power to you. You don't have to fault about this, but like, let's say that 
you, you're not. And let's say that you have a game where you have six rogues and, let's say, one artificer. I don't know. Just throwing out Unearth Arcana. Whatever. You have to understand that if you have a situation like that, understand your party dynamic. Understand that rogues are going to be sneaky little fuckers. They're going to be able to sneak in everywhere. Do not build a story in which they have to go into a head-on fight and they have no other choice but to go into a head-on fight because they will be slaughtered. They will be slaughtered wholesale. Or if you are, you better have storyteller things to keep them alive. You better have a garrison of soldiers that are on their side waiting in the wings because if you do that, you're going to slaughter them. Like, you have to think about your party comp. You have to think... This game, this you know, this fight will be challenging as long as they have a healer. If they don't have a healer in the party or someone who readily has healing spells, they're walking into a meat grinder. I guarantee you're going to lose four or five players, you know, in like an eight-person game if you, you don't have a healer. It, 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 it's things like that. Just always think of party comp. Think of how this can go wrong. Think of how this can go right and build around strengths and weaknesses of the party in front of you. Another one, this one is a little bit more, I do it myself and it's always really worked out well for me. If you're very set on this, that's okay too. Um, but build your NPCs around need. So for instance, we already talked about this, that you have comp. Or maybe you have a composition you're like, you know what, they really need a barbarian. Like, they need a barbarian to get through things. Or they need a wizard. They need a rogue. Like, they have to be able to sneak through some things. Like, I want... I want this to be part of my game, but they have no rogue, so what am I going to do? Well, in that situation, it's actually relatively simple. You have to build the NPC rogue for them. And, yeah, the NPC is going to be doing those aspects, and it's not going to be as fun or challenging because the PCs aren't doing it, but it's a really good way to ensure that bad shit doesn't go down because it's like, oh, man, this fight would be great if we had a healer. If you already have a healer NPC, because the other ones didn't make a healer, you've got a healer NPC that can, that can help them through this. So it's, always think of that. Like, think of what your characters need. And once again, this one's more me, and I can understand that maybe, you like, just you, you have that NPC idea in your head and you're just going to roll with it. Don't fault you too much there. Like, just do what makes you feel natural, but, like, this is a really good way to ensure that you never end up in a shitty situation because you just didn't have a character who could stealth or you just didn't have a character who could heal. Number 10, and this is the big one, and this is gonna, this one's gonna feel like a bit of a cliche. As we've gotten to this, this is the last one, like this is gonna be a bit of a cliche, but your passion is infectious. We talked about like how passion can be a problem, you have to make people care. Your passion and energy can sometimes get through to other people like if, if you're feeling passionate about something if you feel confident it's it's like um oh shit i can't believe i forgot the guy's name who plays Tyrion lannister it's gonna y'all are gonna make fun of me i i don't care anymore right now um but he said it himself confidence can cover up flaws passion and confidence as a storyteller can cover up the flaws that you're inevitably going to have so as long as you go in with the right attitude, as long as you go in saying, you know what, damn the torpedoes, let's just do this, I think that you're going to usually come out on top. This, this, is, this might not always come across too, like there's also kind of like a little bit of a baseline charisma that's sometimes attached to that, but just know that if you're really passionate about something, let people know, let people know that this is something you've worked on, this is something that you're really excited about, and just generate that, like, have that energy about you whenever you're behind the screen, and if you have that passion, some people might forget that, you know, the fight was kind of boring, or the, the NPCs weren't all that fleshed out. It's, it's that energy that can really get you through sometimes. And I think that that's probably one of like the biggest <laughs> advices I can give to people who want to great, make a great game. Just have that great game energy, and I guarantee you that it will usually work out for you. 
Thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more, and please follow me on Twitter at Tanner Reviews. Please become my patron on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one.